Hello everyone, welcome to this library video for HDFS. My name is Monica Latham and I am your subject librarian. So um, I'm going to teach you today a little bit about uh, library resources, uh, some that will be especially helpful for you when you are going through your research for this course and for your theory paper. So um, I'll show you several things, um, several different things, hopefully some new things. If you are new to CSU, uh, this will be very, very helpful to you, hopefully. Um, this might be a review for some, but hopefully we'll learn something new today. So. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So you need to write a paper and you need to do some research on a theory. So let's figure out how to do that. First thing I'm going to show you today is our library homepage. So if you're new to CSU, you'll find all library materials that you need um, from this homepage. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, about that, you're probably going to find uh, on, on the page here. So this is the main page. Um, this is a giant search box in the middle of the page. You can use this for searching things if you want. I'll show you a couple of ways to search things a little more effectively, uh, but you can always do this. That's not a problem. If you are ever in need of help from a librarian, uh, please take note of this ask feature right here up in the right hand side of the web page. This is how you find your subject librarians uh, for the library. So, and you can find my information there as well. And I'll show you a couple of ways to do, to find me there as well. Um, new to CSU, this is the ask button, the ask button on our website. It's a live chat feature that's available to you 24 seven. If you have any questions, click on that and a normal chat box will pop up and you can type in your question and some of them will be there to answer it for you. Okay. So, um, I, Keep an eye on this. Always return back to this homepage. The first thing I'm going to show you is a, uh, a guide that I've put together to help you in your research for everything HDFS. Um, the goal for this is to have resources at your fingertips in one spot uh, so you don't have to search everywhere for it. So you can either click research help here and search for a guide that way, or even easier, I'm just going to type in the big giant search box um, HDFS and click search for that. And then I will show up as your suggested librarian and there's a research guide for human development and family studies. So let me click on that and I'll show you what that looks like. So you have a bunch of information here. Again, I'm trying to gather it for you in one spot so you don't have to go searching for it everywhere. So um, my contact information right here. Uh, if you're looking for articles, here's a link to that. Books, reference site, and down the line. Now, if you haven't done searching for a while, uh, you're new to this graduate program, whatever, um, so there I've just added these instructional videos on basic search strategies. Um, if you want to look at that, that's there for you. Um, but right here and right now, I'm going to click on these article, this article button so you can take a look at what we've got here. I've put together these databases for you that we'll be looking at today. So you can just click right out to them. Um, if you are not in our in this research guide, you can also find them from our main homepage. I'm just clicking on libraries to get back to the homepage. A to Z database list is where you're going to want to go. If you know um, that you're in search of a database, if you know the name of the database, you can search for it by um, alphabetically by letter. Um, starting points are here. I wanted you to, I wanted to point this out to you too, that if you're looking for, say your research takes you off into a different direction, maybe a business side or, or um, environmental, whatever, I don't know what you're going to be finding. Um, you can search by subject for databases right here. You can click on that and it will show you um, the ones for like education, for example, and your best bets will come up here and also the relevant librarian towards that subject. So. Keep that in mind that's another way to get to your databases um, but these are the ones that you will primarily use now if you have been in this uh, subject area of study for a while you are probably very familiar with this first one psych info this is definitely your go-to database for uh, hdfs and hdfs students um, i'm going to open a new tab so i can come back to it later 
Um, if you are off campus, um, it will ask you to authenticate so that the website knows that you are affiliated with CSU. These products are not free to the general public, but you get to use them as CSU students. So um, if you do run into a sign-in page, it's just your EID and your password, as long with, along with everything else you use on campus. Um, so this is what uh, APA Psych info looks like. I'm gonna increase the size here a little bit, hopefully. There we go. Uh, you that, that's way too big. Okay. So um, let's look at this. Now, the great thing about um, Psych Info is when you um, are given a assignment from your professor, they usually have a lot of criteria you need for information that you're using. Um, for example, in, in the assignments you, you'll be doing, you need to include empirical studies, uh, peer-reviewed journals, and everything needs to be in, within the last 10 years. Now within this database, you can filter all those things out right away before you even start searching, which which is great. So you know you don't fall in love with an article that looks great and find out it's not going to be applicable for what you're looking for. So let me show you these uh, limiters down here on the bottom part um, of this. Now if you look at this, it looks awfully overwhelming. It's really not um, once you get used to it. So. Say your professor tells you you need scholarly peer-reviewed journals, simple click and it will it will filter those out for you. Publication year is over here. I'm going to do the last 10 years. You just type that in there and then it will limit your results to those 10 years. Um, another great feature, uh, I always click on English because I don't read another language, but if you do, feel free to not do that. <laughs> um, you can do things here on the bottom. You can re narrow things down by empirical study. Um, that is very unique to APA Psych Info, so use that. That's super. You don't have to weed, weed through all those methodologies. Um, I'm going to exclude dissertations. Um, if you're allowed, again, don't do that, but if it's something that you've been asked to exclude, please do. Um, look for document types. I think you also need to um, include review or a, a review article or meta-analysis. Um, I think methodology, I think we've got meta-analysis on here. Um, so if you come back and do another search later, click on this one instead of empirical study. And then document type, this one has review. You can, you can sort by review. So those are easy ways to narrow the, out those limiters and get those um, requirements off your table and into your into your paper. So once you have those set, I usually do that first so I don't forget because um, it's easier to do beforehand, but there's a way to limit things out after you do a search as well and I'll show you that um, as we go along. But let's say we're doing a, a paper on uh, the feminist theory. Theory. That's right, okay and um, parenting or parents, okay, and I'll do, I don't need to capitalize it, parents, and I'm gonna put an asterisk here on the end, that'll give me parent or parents, it'll give me every variation on the ending of that word, I can use that. Um, so if you're not familiar with keywords, this is where that comes in. I put quotes around feminist theory because I don't want the word feminist, by itself, or I don't want the word theory by itself, I want those two words together, so I put them in quotes, um, and I put the asterisk on the end to give me the variation on the endings. Um, always remember, don't put questions in here, just take those keywords and those key terms and stick them in and use them that way. Databases don't like big, long questions. They won't answer it, it'll just get angry. Um, another good way to make sure you get all the information that you, you're wanting about these, um, these keywords is to use synonyms as well. So remember or means more. So if I'm putting an or in here, I can do mother or father or uh, children, um, whatever terms that you deem 
valuable enough to put in there to expand that. Um, I always like to start broad and then narrow it down from there to see where uh, the research is happening and who's talking about what. We don't know. We might think they're talking about one thing and it turns out to be another thing. Um, you won't know until you get in there. So uh, never, never think it's weird to change a search um, or to change up a topic even. Uh, if you find out there's not information on there. But that's why I always start wide to see how they're talking about it. So this is pretty broad. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search this and we'll see what this looks like. And um, so I have 26 articles um, with all those parameters that I set. So these are all empirical studies within the last 10 years. They're all in English. There are no dissertations, this kind of thing. So if that's what I'm looking for, this should be right spot on the money. Now, once you get in here, and if you've forgotten to set those limiters, this left-hand side is where you're going to want to be looking uh, for those limiters as you go. Um, you can see right now what, what limiters I have right here. Um, and so if I need to get rid of some of those, I can. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I can change dates here. It has source types uh, um, and this kind of thing. So take a look on that left hand side if you're getting a lot, a lot of results and they don't seem to be really relevant to you. Um, I also like to look at uh, the subjects. So I make sure that it's looking for what uh, I'm looking for. If you need to narrow it down, age is a great way to narrow it down. Your major headings are here. Um, and especially for the courses that you're taking. Uh, sometimes your methodologies can be important. Take a look at those if you need to narrow those down. And also you can see what kind of tests and measures that they are being used in these studies right here. So sometimes you're searching, not quite sure what the name of the measure or the test is. This is where you can find that kind of in, um, information. And then you can search for that specific test or, or measure within this database. Um, and then you just put quotes around it and make sure it's that test or measure. So if you're looking for that. Now, um, as I go back up to the top here, how do I get this? Um, th this should be pretty easy and hopefully you're familiar with this. Um, you can click on it uh, and take a look around. Anything with a green, with a blue link, you know, it's, it's clickable. Um, that's pretty, pretty um, today, it happens all the time today. Look at the abstract, see if it's worth your time. Um, it'll have keywords and um, subject types. If you need to go in a different direction, take those keywords and put those in your search. Um, but all of your information for that kind of thing is here. So if it looks good to you and you want it, that's fine. This one is great. It has um, over here on the left hand side, it has PDF full text. That means I click on this and the PDF will, full, will pull up no problem whatsoever. Um, if this is not here, um, you can use this one. Find it at CSU. We'll get it for you that way. If you remember nothing else from this, please know that it's our job to get you the information you need to be successful. That is pretty much our only job. Um, and you shouldn't have to pay for any of that because you've already paid for that as a, as a CSU student. So if you're ever searching for things and something comes up and you want it and it's asking you for money, don't ever pay for it. Um, we will get it for you. That's what interlibrary loan is for. So, and I'll show you how to get there in just a minute. But click on this and this will pop you out to our database and show you where you can find an article from there. There are also these tools on the right hand side that you can save, you can cite, you can export, or you can save it to Google Drive. You can also log into um, EBSCO. EBSCO is the host site. It's hosting this APA Psych Info. Um, so you might see it. Uh, see this little icon in the corner for several databases um, but just know your this is the one you're searching in um, so don't ever tell your professor you're searching in EBSCO they won't know what you're talking about because if we click on this one you can see how many databases are include included in um, psych info as a as a host site for these databases this can also be really really helpful if um, you're searching in here and it looks great, but you're, you want to make sure that you've got all of the um, 
information that is available to you, you can come in here and you can change it uh, or you can add databases and then they'll do a search all at one time. So say I wanted to search cab abstracts and um, maybe family society studies worldwide and uh, Medline, um, you can add those and then click OK and then it will search your same search for all those databases. So that is an advanced search feature that we don't we don't teach the undergrads, um, but it will give you, and notice that we went from 20 some odd to 573. So um, if it is an EBSCO database um, and you know you wanna use it and you wanna search it, go ahead and click this, eee, choose databases right here at the top and you can, you can get some more searching that way. Now, um, as I was talking about um, getting things from CSU, um, you'll notice that this one doesn't have PDF full text right here. It has the find it at CSU button. So let me show you what this looks like. So we click on it, it takes you to the library site and we don't own it. It says how to get it. Um, if we had it, it would say find it at and then it would either have a link or tell you where it would be in the physical library. This one we don't have. Doesn't mean you can't get it. This is just when you need to click on Fort Collins Interlibrary Loan. Click on that. Um, it will automatically populate a request form with all of this article information on it. So you don't even have to, don't even have to type it in, which yeah, I used to have to do. So lucky you, that's never fun. Um, but it, and it will take you into that and you can, you can request this. See how it's already filled in for me? Um, if you've never signed into Interlibrary Loan before, it will ask you a bunch of questions. Um, it will only do that one time. After that, it looks just like this. And I can go through here, tell them when I need the article by, uh, let them know that I have read the copyright warning, uh, and submit a request. And what that will do is we'll send it to our interlibrary loan department. They will get this article digitally. Then they'll send you a link saying it's ready. That links you to this site. And then you can look at your, um, your document from here. Okay. So again, don't, don't hesitate to ask. We're happy to get it for you. Okay. All right, so that is psych info. The other things that I wanted to show you today, and I'm gonna leave that open in case we wanna go back there, is um, I think I wanna go into PubMed next. PubMed is a really good resource um, for, for your field um, and for the medical field. And this will be a great resource to get to know because it's open. Um, and that means that you don't have to pay for a subscription. So you'll notice here it has a little unlocked key. Um, so that means it's open. So that means after you are graduated from CSU uh, and you're off doing your own thing, uh, you can still get in there and search around. So I'm gonna open it in a new, a new tab just so it will be there. And this is what it, it looks like. It automatically starts with the basic search. So a search box, you can put in your search terms. We could do family theory if we want. Um, if you want it to look like something you've, you've been searching before, you can search advanced search builder um, and enter some, some terms here. So I can do feminist theory. Again, I would put in quotes, uh, this kind of thing and do that. And one great thing about um, PubMed, besides that, that is open and you don't have to pay anything for it, is over here you can search, you can either search all fields, but if you're getting a lot of results and it's way too many and overwhelming, you can click this and decide to narrow it down. So what I find the most helpful is this title and abstract limiter, because if it's really important, the uh, researcher would put it in either the title or the abstract, these terms. So you can click on that and then it would, it would, um, it would show up in the search there. Now the thing with PubMed is it builds a search in another box. So I add it to here and then it shows this query box right here. 
So then I can add other terms. And if I don't care at this point, I can put all fields and I can put uh, parent or parenting. Um, it doesn't like asterisks in this one. So, um, and I'll show you after, after I do this, I'll show you a little more complete way to do this. Um, and I can add that to it and then I can, so it builds it for you and it's doing it by and, and if you want it to do it with or, that's fine. Just add it in, click, click it, and then you can do your search. Now it remembers every search so you can build upon it as need be. We got 22 results for that, um, which is great. It's not too bad, it's not overwhelming, but I haven't put in any limiters yet. So um, we wanna change the date. We're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to change it here on the left-hand side. Again, left-hand side is a great place to look. Um, and now we're down to 11 results. Um, and you can look at article types here and narrow things down here, okay? So that that is a way you can search that. Now, if I go back to the display, one thing about PubMed is that they use what are called mesh terms, and maybe you've heard of that before. Um, those are uh, medical subject headings. So what that means is they've looked at these articles and they have picked out the pieces of it and they put them in a group, okay? And this is done by people. So it's been physically looked at by a human and they've decided that it fits under this title. Okay, so it makes searching very much more specific. But how do you know which mesh term they use for what you're looking for? So right here from the home page, they've got under explore mesh database. And this is a database for mesh terms. So I click on that and up here is a search box and I can look for what, what I need to look for. So um, say I wanted to do a parenting, oops, parenting. Um, I can see, and it, it does the drop down menu, so you can you can see what they're doing. Okay, I just wanna do general parenting and see what this looks like. So I've got parenting here, I click on it, and it will give you this tree down here. And it will show you how they got to parenting. So parenting right here is under family relationships, which is under psychology, so, social and family behavior. So it shows you from the top down how they got there. Now some of these terms will have subheadings, so like this one would have something underneath. Um, and if you're searching this specific mesh term, it will give you everything underneath it as well in the hierarchy. Um, so you make sure that you get all of those terms. So if parenting doesn't look, um, if it looks too specific, for you, click on, you can click on the one above it and it will show you this hierarchy here. So under this one, you under family relations, you'll get all of these mesh terms that are below family relations in the hierarchy. Maybe this is applicable, maybe it's not. I, I, I don't know, um, but you will know for sure. So if this is helpful, then you make sure that you get all of those. And to use that mesh term, all you have to do is go over here to the right hand side, add, to search builder and it adds it in there. So you'll get this term and all the terms below it to get that complete search for you. Now they also have subheadings and how they talk about how this particular mesh terms talks about things. So you can add, you can add all kinds of things to your search builder from here as well. Um, and it just does it for you. You don't have to type it in with all of the brackets and 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 uh, all that kind of thing so uh, which is super helpful so then I can go ahead and click, click search PubMed it will search for those things there are a lot of them um, again I can narrow them down with the date right here and then if you need a trial or a meta analysis anything like that you can do that kind of search right there now to get these articles, it's just like anything else. You can click on it. Um, you might notice that I've got um, this little box that you probably don't have if you're following along. 
what I have added is if you have, if you use Google Chrome as your search browser, you can add what is called LibKey Nomad. And let me type that in here for you so you can see it. Um, so I'm going to search the library websites, LibKey, um, and LibKey Nomad. LibKey Nomad is right here. And it just makes um, it a little bit easier to get access to CSU um, articles. And it will do this in many different um, facets of your research. So what this does for me in this case is I can just click on it from this spot and it will take me to, um, it's locating the article for me. So that might not seem like much at this point, but sometimes you have to go in, you have to see if it's where it's from, and you go to find it at CSU, um, and then you click through another click link here, and now I have to go to either PubMed Central or DOAJ directly. It saves you a couple clicks, which when you're doing research, a lot of research, it can help you out. So that's what that is. Now, um, you can use find it at CSU, no problem, um, or there will be um, a PDF full text download version. Now, another thing with LibKey is it also lets you see the complete issue of where this uh, article is located. So you can see if there's anything relevant, anything else relevant. Maybe it was a topic issue where it's on a specific topic. Um, so you can look at it and see if anything similar is around it, and that'll help you um, get your information, uh, find more appropriate articles as well. So it can be very, very helpful. So keep that in mind. Now the good thing about um, PubMed as well is it, it remembers everything that you've searched, so, and it tells you all your results. So I've done some searching here earlier. Maybe I wanted to add um, this one to the search as well as this one. And I'm going to add it with and. And it builds your search up here in the query box. And then you, you can run another search. So you don't have to type it in. You don't have to go out of the mesh thing, this kind of thing. Um, it was not a good example to pick the one with one and with one result. But and you can see how that works. So that's super helpful. Okay. It's so hard not being able to ask you if you have any questions. Um, but anytime you have any questions, please let me know. I am here to help you out. So the last one I wanted to show you today was Web of Science. This is going to be really fast and um, hopefully very easy for you. I've already been in here and I've already put in um, some search um, queries. The thing about this is it will show up with this one search box and it's searching by topic and that's fine. You can change it if you want, um, if you know what you're looking for. Um, but you can add a row. You can add as many rows as you want and just search those boxes in there. And then your time spans are a little limited here, um, but you can add that as well. Uh, perform your search and you'll get some some results here. Now the thing, and I had changed it earlier, this is why I'm clicking around here. Um, the thing with Web of Science is a scientific database, so it always thinks, its default is that the date is the most important thing. So it's going to sort by date automatically. I don't like that. I like to go by relevance, um, but that's a personal um, preference. But if I'm searching for something, I would like to search. I would like to see what I've searched for. So um, I like to change that. Another great thing about Web of Science is you have your limiters here on the left-hand side, so don't forget that. But it shows you right here on the right-hand side how many times this article has been cited by other researchers. So this one's been cited five times. That's pretty, pretty good. That's probably better than this one that's been cited one time. Um, or you can see. Not that it's good or bad, but anyway, it gives you an idea. So yeah, I don't, I don't want to be, <laughs> be mean to any one article or over another. But again, I've got LibKey Nomad on here, so I can just click to it. Web of Science does not have any PDFs inside of it. You're always going to have to click out to somewhere else. Um, 
the good thing about Web of Science is it's 99% peer-reviewed, um, so you don't have to worry about that so much. But as you get in there and you're researching and you're seeing things, if anything looks really weird, it does not hurt to double check and make sure it's a peer-reviewed article. Um, but they're mostly peer-reviewed articles. Um, but you can click on them like anything else. It's a blue link. Look in there. They will highlight what you searched for and why this came up in your search and see if it's applicable for what you're needing. Another great thing about Web of Science is a lot of times um, they will have all of their cited references in here. And if they are available, they're linkable within this um, format right here. So I can click on this one and I can go straight to this one if it looks applicable to what you're searching for. So not only do they have how many times they've been cited, they have how many references they themselves have cited. And if they are linkable, they will make that available to you in just this format. So super helpful. Um, I find it super helpful anyway. Just click, 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 click around. And if you, I would highly recommend using a citation manager. So Zotero, EndNote, Mandalay, something like that. And it will download to that. So I can export to um, your, um, your citation manager from any of these sites uh, so I can or you can cite it here there's your citation um, and let me show you how to find citation info from from our research guide so I type in HDFS here's our research guide and I've got a whole page on citing and writing so you can get all of these links out to uh, someone else to somewhere else to help you um, cite. So whether your professor wants you to use AMA or APA, I believe it's APA for you. Here's some links for for that as well, all in one one box with a little bow on it for you. So um, that's all I had for you today. Um, again, please, please, please contact me uh, if you have any questions. I can do, we can do a Zoom meeting, we can do a team meeting, we can meet Google Meets or Google Hangouts, whatever they're calling it nowadays. Um, all you have to do is come to this point, click schedule appointment um, to meet online, and it will take you to my um, calendar. You can see when I'm available, just click on one of these open circles, and I'll I'll email you back and see how you would like to meet with me. Uh, but I am your librarian and I'm here to help and that's my only job. So ask me, ask away, and I'm more than happy to help you. So it was a, it was a pleasure teaching you today. Uh, please contact me and have a great day.